It's almost here in a presidential campaign that's been white hot for months. We're finally getting down to some voting. The Iowa caucuses will be held tomorrow. Republicans Donald Trump and Ted Cruz are running a tight race there, according to polling. So are Democrats Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders. For all of the attention that Iowa gets, the fact is a relatively small number of Iowans actually participate in the caucuses. With the exception of the Democratic caucuses in 2008, Drake University's Iowa Caucus Project says that in the last two election cycles, only about 20 percent of eligible caucus goers took part. Just what happens at a caucus? Here to shed some light on Iowa's quirky political process is WISN 12 political reporter Kent Wainscott, who is heading to Iowa today. Kent, it's good to have you back on the program. I'm glad to be here, Mike. You're a veteran of this process. How many of, of these have you done? Yeah, this will be my fourth uh, caucus, and I will tell you, every time it is fascinating to watch. It's, it, it, it sounds strange to say this is unlike anything you've ever seen in politics, but it really is. So take us inside a, a caucus. What does it look like? What does it sound like? Give us an example of what it, you've seen. Well, we've seen them in in homes and churches and school cafeterias and auditoriums. My first caucus was in a uh, century-old one-room schoolhouse down a gravel road. It, it's, it's a small town hall meeting. Um, instead of going to a polling place, mm -hmm. people turn out on caucus night and debate and argue and discuss with their neighbors uh, which candidates they choose to support, and they try to persuade each other to shift their vote, and then they tally them up at the end of the night and, uh, and pick a winner. Uh, how, uh, I'm interested in that persuasion, mm -hmm. the power of persuasion. What, yeah. what does that look like? Well, I tell you, it's fascinating. It, it, it's different really for, uh, for the Republicans than it is for the Democrats. Right. And on the Democratic side, it, it's um, the most unusual, certainly. They, they'll, they'll gather in the room, they'll do a show of hands or take a vote as to which candidates they support. Any candidate that doesn't get about 15% of the voters in that room to support them is not considered a viable candidate. They're eliminated from the process and then the voters who are supporting that candidate can choose to move to support a different candidate. So you get 10, 15, 20 minutes to try to persuade these other people to come over to, uh, to your side. Do you see typically much movement or are people pretty much set in their ways? Martin O'Malley said the other night during the debate, you know, stand with me, right. don't, don't uh, move quickly to somebody else, stay with me. Do people do that? Well, what you'll see, I think in this case, uh, particularly on the Democratic side, the O'Malley supporters, if they don't reach 15 percent in that particular caucus room, um, both the Sanders and Clinton camps mm -hmm. will be trying to persuade those people and say, look, if you don't support one of us, your vote won't count here. And so in the end, I think the O'Malley supporters, if they haven't reached that 15 percent threshold, probably will move to one side or the other. Uh, talk uh, to us for a moment, Ken, about sort of the demographics in the room. Who participates? Are these young people, older people? We hear a lot about older people, mm -hmm. people my age even. Right. Uh, they're the people who go to the polls. They're the people who participate in the process. Is that true in, in these settings? Yeah, it's, you know what? It's a good cross-section. I think you probably see a similar demographic makeup uh, than you would see at the polls here. The difference in Iowa is you're not just committing the time that it takes to go to a polling place and maybe stand in line, cast your ballot, and then go home. In this case, you have to all show up at the same time, you know, 7 o'clock on a, on a Monday night, on a cold Iowa Monday night, and commit an hour and a half or two hours or however long it takes to complete that process. And I've only got a few seconds left, mm -hmm. but what's the great unknown on Monday night? What don't we know at this point? You know, I think this year it's an interesting dynamic, particularly with the Trump camp, because in the past it's always been about the ground game, which candidate right. gets their people out to caucus night. Trump uh, has not had much of an organization. He's relied on his name recognition, his popularity, the big crowds that turn out at his events. He's hoping that they show up and support him on caucus night. We'll see. Kent Wayne Scott, WISN's political reporter, uh, will be in Iowa for the Iowa right. caucuses. Good to have you on the show, Kent. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Next on Upfront, Governor Walker's path back to better job approval ratings.